Good morning, everybody. Welcome you all to today's program on India Gulf Business Exchange. I would request Mr. Amborish Dasgupta, President of the Bengal Chamber, and Mr. Tariq Izaldin Hassan Al Mohtan, Commercial Counselor, the Embassy of Republic of Yemen to India, to please come to the dais. I'll request Mr. Das Gupta to please deliver the welcome address. Good morning, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, Mr. Tariq. It's uh, indeed my great pleasure in welcoming all of you to today's program on India Gulf Business Exchange organized in association with Ministry of External Affairs, Government of India. We have been trading with the Gulf for over 4,000 years now and Oman used the Indian rupee as its currency until 1970. India's historic relationship with GCC countries is growing like never before in the history as the progressive approaches are more satisfyingly expanding for both the parties in absolute terms. The GCC countries are India's third largest trading partner, with exports to this region constituting about 3 to 4 percent of India's global exports, and our imports from this region accounting for more than 20 percent of the India's global imports. Trade with the GCC countries got a boost with the liberalization of the Indian economy in the early 1990s. India's IT boom and our IT, ITES services also contributed to the bilateral trade with GCC. From the strategic point of view, India and the GCC shared the desire for political stability and security in the region. Their common political and security concerns translate into their efforts of peace, security and stability in the Persian Gulf region and South Asia. All these will create further opportunities for us in the GCC India cooperation in the future with security consideration. The areas for cooperation, of course, are now going beyond investments, trade, commerce, sharing, and development of human resources. We believe that this is the opportune time to organize this, uh, <coughs> organize this program focusing on India's overseas business with GCC. Very recently, we organized a seminar on opportunities in Qatar and Gulf Cooperation Council with Doha Bank on 11th of July in Taj Bengal, where we had the Doha Bank chairman also who came in. The program was graced by Dr. R. Sita Raman, the group chief executive officer, the chairman of the Doha Bank. Prior to that, we have been carrying out this kind of bilateral trade, a <coughs> bilateral trade boosting programs. We have done it with U.S. also. We have done it with the Middle East. We have sent our team to New York also and uh, to attend much of these bilateral trade programs. And this is one of our one of our focus areas to maintain a relationship with the consulates, with the Ministry of External Affairs, and just to promote the bilateral trade with the various countries. We take delegates out to large number of countries. We will be soon having our delegates moving to Myanmar, moving to Italy, moving to London. So we will be taking our delegates there. Now, as I was talking to Mr. Tariq, I just got to know also that they have an uh, some kind of a business investments program with India, but they are not at all aware of Bengal. I mean, what we are good at, they do have a lot of people coming in and taking and consuming a lot of our healthcare services. They're also doing a lot of import from India. And many of the business people out there are establishing shops also here. But unfortunately, we have failed to really keep him aware or keep his embassy aware of what Bengal strengths are. And therefore, I hope today, these event will trigger that relationship and we are very happy that Bengal Chamber could make that event come up which will trigger this relationship. We will be also, I promised him that we will prepare a document showing West Bengal strengths and what are things that we are good in and he also assured that he will be sharing that with all his colleagues and send it to his country. So I'm really hopeful that this will be the, this will be the triggering of a new relationship between Bengal and the Middle East and particularly uh, with Yemen definitely. 
With this, may I now invite Mr. Tariq Izadin Hassan Al Muthan, Commercial Counselor, the Embassy of the Republic of Yemen to India, to deliver his address. Thank you, Mr. Tariq, for being here with us. Thank you very much. <coughs> Good morning, everybody. Mr. Ambrish Gupta, President of PCCI, Your Excellencies, this distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to be here among you participating in this session on the trade ties between India and Gulf countries, hosted by the Bengal Chamber of Commerce and Industry, BCCI one of the oldest chamber in the country. For the last one and a half centuries, the chamber has played a pioneering role in st steering the evolution of commerce and industry in India. Today, BBC BCCI is deeply involved in areas like healthcare, education, energy and environment, information, technology, finance and banking, Corporate government, governance, MSME de development, manufacturing, infrastructure, tourism. As you are all aware, the pace of developing relation between countries is contained on the economic and commercial sides. The more growth in this vital sector would have positive effect on the level of relation between countries in various fields. The global economy, especially the Indian economy, has witnessed a remarkable growth in the recent few years, and the Indian economy has achieved a great leaps by virtue of the wise policies adopted by the government in the recent years. India and Gulf countries have historic ties dating back to the ancient time, where goods and commodities were shipped from and to India through the Arab Sea routes. The relation between Yemen and India actually has a long history of the trade and commerce dating back to the year of 1839. At the time when the Yemeni city of Aden became a part of the British Empire and run by the British Commissioner in Mumbai. This helped to the trade between the two countries to grow and people travel or migrate from and to India. This ref reflected now by the presence of around 300,000 people with Yemeni origin are living in Hyderabad in India. At the same time, it's estimated that the Indians and Aden were 8,563 in 1856 and gradually increased to 15,817 in 1955. You know, uh, Ambani, the founder of the now famous Reliance Group, also started his career as a trader in Aden. In Yemen. His son Mukish Ambani was also born in Aden on April 19, 1957. The current incidents which have stormed Yemen leading to the closure of airports and seaports affected negatively on the commercial activity of Yemen. With various countries in the world, with the great of Allah, the, region, the, the regional and international efforts have started to put an end to the war in Yemen and to resume peace and return to the normal life. India is considered as a destination for many Yemeni nation, na, na, nationals. They come to India for medical treatment, for studying, and for business purposes. At the same time, there are many Indian nationals working in Yemen in various fields, especially in the medical sector. 
In fact, all of these ex exchange ca contribute to further enhancing the relation between the two countries and the two countries share close and friendly ties with a significant economic interest in various field and bilateral trade of over 3.25 billion US dollar. With this small words, I thank you all for your attention and wish you every success for the continuation of today's session and for a further discussion to develop it. Thank you very much. In case there is any question, would you like to have an interactive session with Mr. Tarek? I was talking to Mr. Tarek about their interest in India. So one of the things that came up was uh, health care. There are a lot of Yemenis people who actually are coming to India for better health care. And as they are not aware about the facilities available in Bengal, so he was asking me whether the same chain, Fortix, uh, Ranbaxi, Apollo Glenia Girls, the same chain that they get in Bombay and Delhi, whether they are also available in Bengal or not, which I said yes. But I, <coughs> if there is anybody from healthcare uh, out here, can definitely connect to him and see that how we can help uh, <coughs> some of his people who are coming to Delhi and Bombay, but we can also divert some of those medical uh, assistance seeking crowd to Calcutta. <coughs> Also, I think the other areas of interest uh, that he was expressing is in some of the manufacturing imports which they, which they do, and also skill development. Uh, education and skill development is also another area. <coughs> Actually, you know, the Yemeni businessmen, you know, come to India, uh, not uh, officially, I mean, not through the embassy. The all Yemeni businessmen, you know, make, you know, uh, discuss, I mean, meet the Indian businessmen and directly make the business without, you know, any intervention from the, the embassy. But yeah, if you have, you know, uh, if you are a seller of the tea, or if you have company of the tea, you can, you know, b provide us of, uh, with your uh, you know uh, company profile, and uh, I will provide all the you know any any, any business came to India, I will provide them with this uh, company, and maybe you will make business in the future. No, I, I was talking about the, in general, Bengal is a big producer of tea. That's why this could be an area where we could probably increase our trade with Yemen. For that, you know, sometimes the, the uh, Yemeni businessmen they, they, they don't know. They don't, if, if I am in Delhi and I don't know the, you know, the, the, the Bengal is a very famous of tea. But uh, if you provide us by all information, because we are suffering from the leak of the information actually, so Bengal and other, uh, other state in India actually. And uh, maybe we will make business in the future. So that's something which we will yeah, be with ITA, up, maybe yeah. maybe with because ITA you can talk to them. IT, ITS, T. Uh, we also, I was talking to him about the industrial products, manufacturing, metals and mines, brick refractories, forging, foundry, areas where we are uh, uh, at present uh, decently strong. So we will be taking that up from Bengal Chamber to create a dossier which will give him an idea on what's, hap what's go going on well in Bengal. And then he can circulate it amongst the... Yes, please. One question here. You mentioned in the medical uh, side, okay, and the health facilities and other things. So that is one area. Which are the other areas where you have got some interest? You feel even uh, will be having interest in India. He mentioned about tea. There may be other produce also, both the industrial as well as the agricultural also. So what is the interest? So if we know that from you, that will be of interest to us. Plus, other than that, what about the projects which are going on there, which we can participate? 
So there are a lot of areas, you have to tell us which are the areas where we can cooperate or we can find interest in both from your end as well as from our end. You know, uh, I am as a you know, commercial attaché in the MBC, you know, I, I, I tried to coordinate between, you know, the uh, Indian businessman and the, you know, Yemeni biz businessman. But unfortunately, they uh, sometimes they, they go directly w without any intervention from the embassy. For that, we, we, we have uh, no, no information about w w what they will uh, they interested to, to buy or uh, how to uh, s make the you know uh, settlement of that. And uh, you know, as we discussed with Mr. Abrish, uh, I need to you know provide us as the embassy about the all information about the you know this uh, you know uh, West Bengal. What's the f famous product you know m manufacturing here, okay. and what's uh, you know? In the, I mean, it's in, in healthcare or you know uh, other other sectors. No. We have we have to we have a leak, we are suffering from a leak for um, information actually. No, I'll tell you one thing here. See, like the medical facilities you mentioned, the yeah. forties and all those brand names they're yeah. available in Calcutta also. The rates are more or less same in all the metro cities in India. But other than that. Does the Yemeni people only looking for the top grade or there are various grades at which you would like to go for the medical facilities? So that is an area where you need to get. Then we have got a lot of things to offer you. Actually, uh, it, it depends about the, <coughs> the, the, the Yemeni businessmen. Some of them, they, they ask for, you know, high rate or some yeah. uh, high quality or, you know, this quality. It's uh, depending about them. Uh, but, you know, as, uh, you know, India is a, a huge country, actually, and we, we can't we can't uh, you know capture all the you know chambers. There is a, a lot of chambers here, you know, and a lot of cities here, and we can't uh, you know capture all the cities yeah, and you know yeah. what's this you know products and this uh, what they manufacture. So but now the, we we have we are planning actually. I discussed with our you know uh, ambassador. We, we don't have actually ambassador. It's a charge in the affairs. We discussed with him to, you know, uh, contact with the uh, different, you know, uh, chambers around India and uh, let them to, you know, provide us by the information at least okay. to, to, to can, you know, re reply with, you know, uh, you know, or dealing with Yemeni or help Yemeni businessmen when they came to. So in this regard, can we contact you directly? Yeah. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, actually, we are one of the largest exporters of uh, FMCG products to UAE in last, uh, say, a year back or two years back. But what we are facing, there is a barrier of taxation gap because I don't know what's the direct taxation avoidance treaty that we you have with India. If that can be looked into, where the impute duties in UAE or the Gulf countries or the GCCI countries, if that can be brought down a little bit. Because now what we're having, it is around 15 to 20 percent you are charging on the export from India. That's in FMCG, like we are into coconut oil, spices, mustard it's oil. As a, a tax or what? The it's a taxation, import Ta taxation. taxation, yes. So what is the, because this is creating a problem in exporting there. So. What we suggest that, like in other countries, like we have with Bangladesh, there is a direct avoidance, direct treaty where the taxation has been brought down. So, if this can be arranged with India also from your part, in the GCC, total GCC country, not for Yemen itself, yeah. say UAE, Dubai, uh, say uh, these total countries, Gulf Saudi Arabia, Gulf countries. Uh, total Gulf countries. So. I would suggest if you can look into this affair. So from our side, from Indian side, if we require any representation through this BCCI forum, should, should I, if we put forward, so that this can come down, then these exports will increase to your country also. Yeah, yeah. This is a problem that we are facing, like we are into FMCG, like uh, we are exporting coconut oil, mustard oil, spices to your countries. So, and second of all is that we are not being able to uh, get a good uh, platform at your point. So, if we contact you, can you give us some uh, names? Of uh, Yemeni uh, business? Yes. Through whom we can export? On 
because we are previously we were doing into gulf through a particular uh, organization but we are not satisfied with it and we are as we are far off from what you are it is not possible for every day to uh, visit your country and monitor yeah. so if i need a base from your part so that we can approach your embassy from our part so you give me a database on your business entities and if we directly contact you or whom should we contact these are the problems that we are facing from shalimar we are from the shalibar yeah, uh, you know so. uh, as as I, i told you you know the yemeni businessmen you know go directly to, uh, through the you know through the indian businessmen sometimes they make uh, a, a huge you know business and the embassy uh, doesn't know anything about that but i i promise you you know if you uh, provide me by your you know profile and uh, i i will i will do my best that that, that i i uh, what i can say uh, could i get your contact details everything from uh, if that's possible yeah yeah for that no no problem we, we. thank you thank you and i would suggest that you look into this taxation part also our next session is on the transfer pricing and taxation with yes. the middle east so we will take that up in that session also because uh, we No, it's a, it, it, depends, it depends about the government policy. It depends upon because there is there is a countrywide the guard policy. Yes. There is a transfer pricing policy and the guard policy that depends. The sovereign wealth fund countries and other countries we have a different policy. So uh, yes. Uh, and the same policy that we apply for Bangladesh as a guard is not applicable for the DCC guard. Yes. And uh, also, you know, to, to, to be honest with you, also, you know, Yemen uh, nowadays is suffering, you know, from unrest. and there is you know war and uh, you know fortunately they started you know negotiation in kuwait before three days and uh, we we hope that we will resume the business and the you know situation will be better and uh, as you know uh, you know the you know business uh, sector is affected by the uh, you know because all you know uh, seaboard closed and all the, 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 the there is no you know indian embassy in, in sanaa yes. we have you know the, now the embassy uh, you know in djibouti mm. and it takes uh, a lot of time to uh, t- t- uh, to issue the visa visas for but uh, no, no, not for just issue for me- medical visa only not for business for business they, they can get it from jordan or from uh, for uh, a lot of obstacles you know between uh, you know business and uh, so that we in some part also so this also taking up this aspect of kuwait also not been very uh, constructive yeah it's not very constructive so that point if you look into oh. uh, i promise you thank you thank you sir uh with this we would request our president to please present a memento to mr tarik uh bengal chamber has an overseas business help desk so if you have any query you can dire- write it to us on go na ongonatbengalchamber.com we will forward it to the relevant authority either to the overseas embassies or to our ministry of external affairs or other business experts or our partner uh, chambers in the uh, destinations you are looking at we will take a couple of minute to change our, uh, over for our business session session we have a uh, taxation cross border ta- uh, cro- uh, taxation management by mr prashun maithe director transfer pricing pwc overseas business of india with special focus on gcc by dr ranojay bhattacharya professor indian institute of foreign trade kolkata uh, policies on exim with special focus on gcc mr sudhakar kasturi director helpline impex private limited and partner generation next business consulting Uh, entrepreneurship opportunities mr ashwin srivastava co-founder and director idin ventures and it will be moderated by mr ordhendu mondol managing committee member of the chamber i'll give you a brief uh, introduction about the speakers mr proshun mai the director of transfer pricing pwc he is the key point con- key point of contact for all uh kolkata and bangladesh best clients he is also in charge of overviewing all aspects of deliverables and services 
Uh, his specialization and experience include uh, more than 13 years of experience in TP documentation, TP planning, and TP controversy. He has under undertaken projects invo involving uh, value chain transformation, supply chain management, advice on profit cash optimization, inbound and outbound planning, profit attribution, uh, to permanent establishment for companies in the automotive, pharmaceutical, industrial products, and IT and ITS sectors. He has assisted one of the automotive OEMs in India with a bilateral APA where profit split method has been used. He has represented various TP litigation matters before the Income Tax Appellate Tribunal. He has been a speaker at different forums such as study circles at Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, International Fiscal Association, etc. The next speaker is Ms. Dr. Ranujay Bhattacharya, Professor of Indian Institute of Foreign Trade. He is a PhD in Economics, recipient of the Fulbright Scholar in Residence Award in 2007-8 and the Asia Fellows Award in 2002-3. He, he is also visiting professor of various institutes both in India and abroad. He is advisor research of Joint Study Group on Indo-Russian Trade 2006-7. Ministry of Commerce, Government of India. His publications include air pollution in developing countries and victims' willingness to pay for it. Our Ready Reckoner, Department of Business Management, Calcutta University, co-authored with Shormila Banerjee. Then we have Mr. Sudhakar Kasturi, Director, Helpline Impacts Private Limited and Partner Generation Next Business Consulting. Mr. Sudhakar Kasturi is a Director of <coughs> Uh, the Helpline Impex uh, Limited and the Exim Institute, which is a division of Helpline Impex Private Limited, Mumbai, and the partner of Generation Next Business Consulting. He is a visiting faculty to various institutes like SPJ and Institute of Management Studies and Research, the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, Institute of Company Secretaries of India, Foreign Exchange Dealers Association of India, Training Colleges of Bank of Baroda, Central Bank of India, ICICI, and others. Uh, he has conducted in-house training programs in various leading organizations like IOCL, BPCL, HPCL, MRPL, Tata International, Aditya Birla Group, Godrej Starlight Group, Bluster, and also uh, Bengal Chambers <coughs> Workshop on Foreign Threat. He has served as an expert uh, on the task force for exports transaction cost reduction projects constituted by Ministry of Commerce and Industry Government of India. Uh, then we have Mr. Ashwin Srivastava, ID in Ventures. He is a startup enthusiast and mentor, and he, ha he has been instrumental in creating various multinational brands out of new startups, a serial entrepreneur with a history of building successful global startups such as Incept. Ashwin has led companies in various domains ranging from electronics to e-commerce. With a dual degree from IIT Bombay, Ashwin has been a mentor and speaker at prestigious colleges across India and is a receiver of numerous entrepreneurial awards as well as technical patents. His startups has um, had multiple multi-million dollar exits and since then he has been instrumental in identifying and mentoring the next unicorn as the director of ID Ventures, a UAE-based venture capital and private equity firm, which is also associated with the Royal Family Investment Holding Company, Russell Khaima Sovereign Holding. In this regard, I have one thing to mention, that uh, Ashwin is best out of Bombay, and they focus on the West and the South, but I think this is the first time they are coming to the East to interact in a forum. So with